The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been rolled, had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down and to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look in the tomb. And she saw two angels in white, sitting there, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir... If you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabunai, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to my father. But go and tell my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Just like the love of God, those Easter lilies get stronger every day, I think. (laughs) Uh, Well, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Mary had had quite a three-day stretch. She had witnessed and listened to the cries of Hosanna as they turned to cries of crucify him, crucify him. She stood by watching as her beloved Lord Jesus was tortured and killed and was laid to rest in the tomb. And all of that happened on Friday. Saturday, of course, was and is the Sabbath, and so no no work or travel were allowed, and so she stayed home more than likely, fretting, preparing to go early Sunday morning, the first day of the week, to anoint the body of Jesus. <clears throat> As you've just heard then, she, when she arrived, she saw the stone had been rolled away, so she returned to Simon and the other disciple that Jesus loved and told them, the stone has been rolled away, Jesus is gone, we don't know where they've laid him. So Peter and the other disciple run to the tomb to see what's up. They go home. And we don't really know what they understand or what they believe. We only know what they saw, but they leave. Mary lingers. She stays behind, fretting. In that moment, she sees those two messengers, those two angels, who ask her, Woman, why why are you weeping? Again, they have taken my Lord away, and I do not know where they have laid him. Tell me, tell me. As soon as she said that, she turned and she saw Jesus, but she didn't know that it was him. And he asked her, woman, why are you weeping? 
For whom are you looking and supposing him to be the gardener? Whoa, stop. Cut the tape. This is where my heart, my spirit has landed in this story this year. Supposing him to be the gardener is a phrase that I typically just roll right over into the next phrase. But it seems to me this, this phrase, supposing him to be the gardener, was written by John, the evangelist, in a way that, uh, with hopes that someone, perhaps a preacher, perhaps a non-preacher, that anyone will suppose, at least for a time, with Mary, that she is right. That he is the gardener. I think most of us, and I'll just do a little survey, most of us think that because she thinks or supposes or assumes him to be the gardener that she's wrong, that she's wrong about that. How many of you would agree with that interpretation of Scripture, that Jesus is not the gardener, he's something more, he's the gardener, he's something more. So most of us assume that Jesus, that Mary is wrong and that Jesus is not the gardener. Again, every time that I've read this story, I've just assumed that she was wrong and I've rushed through this supposing. But John, I think, wants us to linger with Mary. He wants us to linger with Mary and suppose for a moment that she is right. This year... It was me who stood with Mary outside the tomb, wondering, and then supposing, wondering what first what is up, and then second, supposing, supposing that Mary might be right. So I want you to remember how this, how this story begins. This post-resurrection story that no one in the story yet knows is a post-resurrection story. Remember how it begins. Early, on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, nothing had risen except Mary. And with those words, we remember we remember the story that Bruce read for us earlier, the story from the Old Testament, Genesis chapter 2. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, when no plant of the field was, was yet in the earth, and no herb of the field had yet arisen, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was no one to till the ground, but a stream would rise up in the earth and water the whole face of the ground. Then the Lord formed the man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. The man became a living being, and the Lord God planted a what? A garden. The Lord God planted a garden in the east. And there he put the man whom he had formed out of the ground. The Lord God made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. God. God is the original gardener, master gardener. God planted a garden. And God brought forth vegetation. He placed humankind into the midst of the garden, not as authoritarians, not as those in chapter 2, not as those who were called or given dominion, but just as part of, to tend, to care for that garden, to keep it, to bless it, to help it grow. God is the master gardener. Now on the first day of the week, While it was still dark, nothing had arisen. This takes us back to the primordial time. John, the author of this gospel, wants us to return to the beginning. John wants us to see that as Jesus is no longer in the tomb, there is a new beginning. 
Jesus or that Mary stands at the crossroads here at the tomb. She stands at the crossroads between darkness and light. She stands at the crossroads of chaos and order. She stands at the crossroads of death and life. And there at the crossroads, she sees Jesus. She sees the risen Christ and she assumes that he is the gardener. And it's my proposition to agree with her today. It's my belief that she is right. Why did she think he was the gardener? Honestly, we just don't know. But in thinking that Jesus is the gardener, Mary helps us to connect Jesus to God as the one who was with God in the beginning and as the one who... God now, who is, is God, who is God in the resurrection from the dead. In this new life. In this new creation. Jesus stands as the one to give life and to help it grow. Now, I want you to picture this in your mind. I want you to, to have this picture of Mary's encounter with Jesus in your mind and I want you to imagine it. Now, we might all imagine it a little differently, but so if you imagine it differently than me, I invite you to give me that feedback later, but this is how I imagine it. Jesus says to her, Mary. And you can almost see in her body that she falls to the ground. She falls to the ground to, to worship this one who she realizes was dead and now is alive, and she reaches out to touch his feet in worship. Those feet that she had washed earlier with with ointment and wiped with her hair. She reaches out to touch him, but he says, Do not hold on to me, for I have have not yet ascended to my Father. But go and tell my brothers that I am ascending to my Father and to your Father, to my God and to your God. And you can just see Jesus reach down and take her by the hand. And he lifts her up and she grows, she arises, she stands up, she emerges like a plant emerges from the soil. She stands up, she grows up in that moment and what does she do? She goes to her brothers and she tells them, I have seen the Lord. She bears fruit for this good news. She bears fruit for the kingdom of God. Her life is fulfilled in that moment. She becomes the plant of the garden that God has planted, that God raises up, who bears fruit and proclaims the good news that Christ is risen. She does in a moment what we are called to do in a lifetime. She surrenders her life to Jesus. She rises up and she bears fruit. This is what happened with Parker this morning. He has been watered. This little seed has been watered. And he has been called into the family of God. He has become a part of the family of God. And it's now up to us to tend, to help tend him, to bless him, and to help him to grow up that he might bear fruit for the kingdom of God, the fruit of love and, and grace and mercy and forgiveness and blessing and joy. It's the gift of Jesus for all the baptized. Jesus is the gardener. Mary was right about that, I think. He stands, she, he stands in the place of God. Jesus stands in the place of God to tend the creation that is always being made new in his love through the power of the resurrection. Our church, the ELCA, has a slogan, always being made new. And I love that slogan. Because that's who we are. As a people, as a church, as children of God, we are always being made new through the gifts and blessings of God. So that our lives can grow up, be raised up, so that we will bear fruit for God's kingdom. This is the gift of Jesus. No matter who you are or where you've been or what you've done, there is always grace, always forgiveness, always new life poured out as we remember our baptisms, poured out as we come to the table to eat the body and blood of Jesus and become who we are in the world. Always being made new through grace and forgiveness. Always 
being made new day by day, being made new by our gardener who lifts us up, who raises us up, gives our lives meaning and purpose and helps us bear fruit, fruit that declares hope in the midst of despair, peace, hope, uh, fruit that, that, that declares light even when it's dark, hope, uh, fruit that, that, that blesses the world around us. I want you to think about, uh, I, I want to, uh, Jesus as our gardener, think about that, Jesus as your gardener, that he has planted you here in this season for a reason. And, in, and this week I invite you to reflect on, to reflect on your life and how it connects to that moment when Mary surrenders her life to Jesus and is raised up by Jesus and sent forth to bear fruit, I want to invite you to think about your life in relationship to that moment in Mary's life and in relationship to your baptism. And I want you to wrestle with the question, how does or how doesn't my life, how does or how doesn't my action and actions show that, that I have seen the Lord? And reflect God's grace, God's love, and God's goodness, God's beauty, God's blessing, God's welcome into the world around you. And again, next week we will think about the ecology of God's garden. Amen.